What's going on, my beautiful people of YouTube? This is Rain Bean, and welcome to another awesome episode of Live Video Game Hunts, that series where I show you all the cool stuff I got through the week through yard sales, garage sales, flea markets. I go to thrift stores like Goodwill and Salvation Army, and I also use apps like LetGo, OfferUp, Craigslist, Facebook, whatever I can use to get my hands on some awesome games at some excellent prices. Make sure you stick through to the end of the video because I'll go over all the pickups individually as well as some really cool stuff you did not get to see on camera. If you want to support this channel, which I wholeheartedly hope you do, Hit that like button and share this video so other people can see these really cool finds. And hit that like button extra hard this week for Miss Ring Bean because I tell you, if it was not for her people, this video may not have happened and it may be the same next week because they got my schedule all jacked up at work. If you need to get a hold of me, you got links to everything in the description, links to my Instagram if you ever have any questions because YouTube's getting harder and harder as this channel grows and it's growing quick. You got links to my eBay store. If you ever see any of this stuff in this episode you would like, let me know. I always give subscribers really good deals. And you got links to my Twitch channel if you ever want to hear me bitch at a video game. That's the place to do it. But anyways, guys, I want you to sit back and relax. Let's shekel up. Welcome back people here we are with the first pickup of the week I am super happy about this one I have been looking for this box for such a long time now keep in mind I paid seventy dollars for this entire lot it's a little bit high and like I say in other videos sometimes you gotta spend a little bit of money to get what you want out of it but as you can see here we got a complete in box Game Boy and this thing is an absolute beautiful condition it actually turned out to be an upgrade for me because my original Game Boy that I keep I only keep one of them I don't you know see the sense in having three or four original Game Boys I like to keep one and I'll upgrade it each time I get one that's in better condition and this one is absolutely supreme which I'm very happy about so anytime I find an original Game Boy in the wild what I always do with them is I will give them a 100 percent complete refurbishment where I will change the screens out I will get them a back if they need it clean any corrosion out of the battery compartment and I will also fix any deadline issues it might have with the soldering gun which is uh, something that you need to do if you're gonna sell a refurbished Game Boy it needs to be 100 percent refurbished and I usually get somewhere between 40 to 45 bucks for them so that right there is majority of the money that I spent on this lot keep in mind I only spent 70 for this lot and the one thing that I was really after was that original Game Boy box, which is just uncommon. But you see here this little crappy bootleg. This is an old school bootleg console right here. It's like the classic 201. Tell me if you remember that thing right there. But there was also a handful of Super Nintendo games and NES games, two of which I'll get to keep that I was also excited for the lot, which was Joe and Mac. And then there was also Biker Mice from Mars, which is like a $30 game. I was very happy to pick this up. I'll be able to sell the Game Boy in the other games. And there wasn't nothing too special in there. You know, it was like TMNT for the NES. But I'll get majority of my money back, if not all of it. And I'll get to keep two awesome games and this original uh, Game Boy box, which is super cool. I was very happy about this pickup. It was a good way to start the week for sure. So here's a thrift store you won't recognize, but it has been in previous pickups. Just simply because they reorganized it, it's not for the better. I think it looks terrible. I hate the way they've done it. But I do end up finding this PlayStation 2 game that I did not have. It was Pirates Legend of the Black Buccaneer, which was cool. Nothing expensive or crazy, but I do believe it is exclusive. So I picked it up for 2 bucks. It was a pretty good pickup. So here we are at the pawn shop that you have seen in the previous two pickup videos. And this is probably going to be the final time that you see this place. Now, I did have plans to come here and buy everything out towards the end of the month, but I don't think I'm going to do that. Every game you see me pick up or that you see, period, is only $1. And you see some pretty high dollar games here when it comes to the Xbox One and Nintendo DS. Nothing crazy, of course, but, you know, 20 or $30 games. And I made sure to ask this guy, like, three times. I was like, are you sure any game over here for $1? And he was like, yeah, why not? This place is going out of business. I completely understand. They just want to get rid of this stuff, but I happened to come in at the perfect time. Apparently, they took everything from their high dollar cabinet and moved it out here to the floor, which was awesome because I got there right when that happened. And like I said, I asked them, I was like, hey, man, how much are these games? What kind of deal are you going to work with me? It's getting closer to the end of the month. And I assumed he was going to say a dollar, which he did. And I, once he said that, man, I loaded up, as you can see. I get some really cool titles. 
Now, I already know a lot of you out there are going to say, man, you skipped over a lot of stuff. But keep in mind, majority of all these games, other than, you know, the Xbox One and DS and PlayStation 4 games, were all just 4 or $5 games in general. There was no meat on the bone, really, for me to flip. Now, there were, of course, some that you see me get, but I'm getting those just to bundle with systems later on because it does help systems sell when you have a PlayStation 2 and you bundle it with a cool game like Devil May Cry versus Madden 08. It was cool to see them pull all their cartridge-based stuff that they kept in their high-dollar cabinet, but of course everything was just sports, picked through, all the good stuff was already gone, and I remember looking at this stuff when it was in their high-dollar cabinet, and everything was already picked through then, so I don't, no one got to this stuff before me, obviously, because that Xbox One stuff and all the high-dollar stuff would have been missing. But I'm happy because I get to add two SNES games that I didn't have. They were both sports, but hey, for a buck a piece, I don't mind picking them up. It's great filler for the collection. And like I was saying earlier, I did have plans to come in here at the end of the month and buy everything he had. I talked to the owner and he says, yeah, come right at the end of the month. We'll work out a deal. And I could probably get everything he has for somewhere between 50 and $100. There's no way I'd pay more than that. But at the same time, none of this stuff is really worth my time to resell or to bundle. I'm picking out all the good stuff there is. At a dollar a piece, that's fine. I'm happy with that. I'm getting all the good stuff that I need or that I need to bundle with systems later on. And what shocks the hell out of me is this is the third or fourth time that you have seen me visit this place, and I am still finding some games that I overlooked that I am keeping for my collection. And any time I can add games to my collection, that is what this is all about. That is the number one goal, and then finding stuff to sell is second. So I am super happy to find anything that I get to add. You see Crimson Skies right there. If you've ever played that game, you already know that is awesome. It's exclusive for original Xbox. I picked it up because I got some buddies that like for that system and I like to look out for them like I said earlier always network with other collectors you'd be surprised what they see that you don't and you can work out some pretty cool trades you see here on the other side of the rack he added all those sports games that he pulled out for me the last time that I got to look through and I found a couple games uh, but it was cool I actually found this PSP game that it said it was only a, it was exclusive to it so I picked it up it was a dollar it was MLB 11 that was a pretty cool pickup I was happy about it and obviously, like most collectors, I don't go after nothing but sports, but I do like to pick them up when they are exclusive to the system. I feel like it's going to be a special game, and it's cool to add them to the collection, especially when I'm not paying really anything for them. It doesn't hurt to pick them up, and you'd be surprised the cost of some of those sports games. Some of them would be pretty high dollar. Obviously, MLB 11 wasn't, but it's still you know something to keep a side note of. There's sports games that you need to start making mental notes of. There's games like NCAA College Basketball 2K3 for the GameCube. Complete, that's well over $150 right there. NCAA Basketball 10 for the PS3 or 360. Those are $30, $35 games, people. And of course, I got to remind you, at the end of the video, I will go over all these pickups individually so you can actually see everything that I get. I know it's kind of hard to see everything that you see me pick up, and that's why at the end of the video, I like to go over everything one by one. So here was a really nice Facebook pickup that I was happy about. It was a Sega Genesis, had the cords, controllers, all that jazz. It came with a copy of Echo the Dolphin, and then what made me buy the lot was it had a copy of Rocket Knight Adventures, which is a very awesome game right there. I only paid 20 bucks for this. Rocket Knight Adventures is already going to a buddy of mine. He knows who he is. I told him I needed to hold on to it for the pickups, uh, but that is a pretty good pickup right there. For 20 bucks, I can't hate that at all. It's in great condition. Here's Miss Reen Bean right here snagging up a copy of Need for Speed Most Wanted for the original Xbox. What makes this pickup very awesome is this is one that I did not have. You know, ding, 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 I need to have a bell because anytime I find a game for that system, I am super happy. So to pick that up for a dollar and add to my collection, way to go, Miss Reen Bean. So here she is again at the flea market, and she's talking to the guy you have seen in previous pickups. This guy is super awesome. I've known him for quite some time now. Uh, he always works great deals with me. He's fun to haggle with. But you see Miss Ringbean here. She gets some NES cartridges, and she only pays $2 a piece. That is an excellent flea market price right there. And one of the games in particular right there, Flight of the Intruder, is one that I did not have. It's not necessarily a high dollar game by any means, but anytime I can find something I don't have, you know I get super excited for it. It's great to add stuff to my collection. And you see there's also a copy of Super Mario Bros. 3. The label was in terrible condition, but that is an awesome bundler. Anytime I refurbish one of my NESs, I always try to you know bundle them with Mario's, because that's what people want to get whenever they get a system, for the most part. 
And moving further down the table, she sees that he has a Wii, and she only paid $10 for that, which is the most that I am willing to pay for a Wii right now. They're just hard pushers, but for 10 bucks, it has everything you need with it, the sensor, the controller, all the hookups. That's not a bad pickup. I got a feeling Christmas time, they're going to be moving. Like I said, people, I was not kidding. This is a Miss Ring Bean week right here. If it was not for her, this episode would not happen. Here she is at the flea market getting some awesome shekels. You see she picks up Donkey Kong 64 and that Star Wars game. Every game you see her pick up right here is just a dollar. That is an awesome yard sale flea market price right there. And you'll see the lady had other consoles here, Xbox 360 and a GameCube, as well as that PSP. But apparently she wanted too much for them. Miss Ream being smart, she knows what I pay for these things. She's not going to pay more for it. I trust her completely when it comes to shackling, as you can see here. And it's funny because a lot of you out there will always say, man, you are so lucky to have a wife that will actually go game hunting. And trust me, I completely know it. I love her to death. She is getting so smart and knowledgeable with this stuff. It's it's surprising me what she's remembering about this stuff, which is great. And uh, I would love to get a second pair of spy glasses so we can have twice the amount of footage. We we're just not there yet, uh, but we'll get there. You can see the lady pulls out the GameCube controllers, and right away you see Miss Ring being heading right for him. And unfortunately, she does pick up two of them. They had the, the cords weren't frayed or anything, but the joysticks were completely loose. Like I always tell people, if you can hold a controller in your hand and shake it and the joystick moves, it's not going to be a good one. But I can bundle them with something later and maybe get rid of them. But for a buck a piece, it wasn't terrible, it just wasn't ideal. The only real exception to that rule would probably be an N64 controller simply because when the joystick is bad on that one, you can order these replacements online. You can get one that's more traditional or what's really cool is you can get one that's GameCube style, which is really cool. It gives you a joystick that mimics the one you'd see on a GameCube controller. But now here's Miss Reen being at a thrift store that I've never been to, and after seeing this footage, I have got to go check this place out for myself. She gets a bunch of loose disc games. She only pays a buck a piece, but you see she pulls out some really cool titles. And I've told Miss Reen Bean many times what to look out for when it comes to loose disc games, and you see she picks up some pretty good ones. So here's something you should put in the back of your mind to start doing. Anytime you come across older games like PlayStation 1 or Sega Saturn, hold them up to the light. And if you can see pinprick holes where the light is actually shining through, you may want to pass them up unless it's a very high-end game where you're just getting it for dirt cheap. A lot of games are suffering from what's called disc rot nowadays, and that is a sucky thing. And what that means is these older materials are starting to break down, and it is literally rotting. So a lot of the data becomes missing, the games just will not load, they're inoperable, they're basically worthless. And I have had a handful of games to where they just simply will not load, the disc rot has taken over. So if you're out in the wild and you come across a game that you want, it's a high-end game and they want a high-end price, definitely check that because you may find that it may have disc rot and it may be something you want to pass up on. So here's Miss Ring Bean again. She's at another thrift store and she comes across some really cool loose disc games here. A lot of them had the manual, which was really awesome. You'll see games here like Final Fantasy VII. The unfortunate thing is, this one in particular was missing a disc. Same with Legend of Dragoon, you'll see her pick up. She didn't realize exactly how many discs come with these games, which is understandable. But don't be scared to pick them up, people, because like I said in other videos, you can sell individual games even if it's not a complete set because people need them to complete a set. But you also see her here checking for disc rot. Like I was saying earlier, that is something very important to do with these older games right here and I will definitely be going back to check this thrift store out because you can see that hyper scan right there she said it had a price tag of ten dollars on there but that's the price that it just came in with I guarantee it's gonna be cheaper and I'm gonna pick that thing up because you know I like my sidekick consoles and that's definitely one that I want to have same with that zone 40 you see over there which I think is like a bootleg Wii but I'm not too sure without checking it out but this is a pretty cool thrift store. I've had some decent luck here. It's not on our side of the town, so we don't normally get to check it out too often. But I have found some pretty cool games in here like Shadow of the Colossus for the PlayStation 2. That's actually where I got my first copy. Now I've upgraded since then with one that's in better condition. But when I first got that game, this is where it came from. I ended up paying like a dollar or two for it. It's definitely worth checking in on. You'll come across thrift stores like that in your life where they're out of your way, but they are worth checking in on at least once a month or so. So. You'll see Miss Reen being here pick up a copy of Mortal Kombat 3 for the PlayStation 1. For whatever reason, she passes it up. I have no idea why we all have moments like that when we're game hunting where we just 
automatically assume something's not worth picking up. And this was that situation there, but the good thing is I'm going to go back because i got to go after that hyperscan and that zone 40 or whatever the hell that thing was called. And I'm going to pick up Mortal Kombat as well as long as it's still there. And another bit of advice that I can give you, just like you saw Miss Ring Bean do earlier, is anytime you come across those cases that hold CDs, always check them out. You would be surprised what you can find in there. I found pretty cool games in there before, such as like Crash Bandicoot and Resident Evil, that sort of thing. And people automatically assume that they're going to be cheap anyways because they don't have the jewel case it came with. So usually you end up picking them up for only like a dollar a piece, so always check them out. The downside to these really cool titles that you see or pick up is I'm probably not going to keep them. I never keep games that are loose discs. It's very rare that I do. It's got to be a super high-end game, and none of these particularly are. There's some pretty good titles, but I just don't like collecting loose disc games. I love having complete games in my collection, so most likely these are going to be gone and traded or sold for something that I can actually get for my collection. But sometimes, depending on the game, I can actually get on eBay or Amazon and I can find just the case or the manual. I can usually complete the game when I need to if it's something that I want for my collection. And I've done that with games like Mega Man X9. I remember I had them doing with that. And especially with DS games, I have to do it a lot of the time. This right here is my number one pickup for the week. I am super excited about this. If you do not recognize that, that is the Virtual Boy Rental Case. This thing is super obscure. You would see it with corporations like Blockbuster. A lot of small-time movie rental places would have this. Virtual Boy made these cases that had a complete system in there, maybe a game or two, some simple instructions on how to hook it up, and you can actually rent this thing. So these things are not sold in stores. They are actually very obscure to get and kind of hard to find. And one thing that's super special about this is it actually had the foam insert, which is usually always missing with these things. So I was very happy to have that to be part of it. This originally was a Facebook posting. The lady listed it for $200, which is a good deal. But me being the Sheckler that I am, I said, hey, would you take $120 for this? We ultimately settled on $150, which is a great deal because I can sell that Virtual Boy complete for the system, probably make $20 or $30, and I'm going to keep this awesome rental case for free. So I told Miss Ringbean, make sure you check every piece and component that this thing has to offer. Make sure you're checking the headset, the stand, the controller, everything that you can, just to make sure that everything is 100% top notch. And I am glad that she checks everything over because she does find that the stand had a piece broken off of it. The piece was included and I can easily fix it. So she gives me a call while I'm at work. She says, hey, the piece right here is broken off. What do you want me to do about it? And I said, well, how about offering her 130 The lady, I guess, scared that we weren't going to give her any money for any of this, uh, eagerly took it. Uh, so $130 for this Virtual Boy with the rental case, two games. The games were nothing special. It was Mario Tennis and then Red Alarm. I think Mario Tennis was a pack-in game to begin with. But that piece is easily fixable. But again, it wasn't mentioned in the ad. She said the thing was 100% anyways before we even met up. But for 130 I was happy to pick this up. This is a prime example of how to grow your collection by putting just a little bit of elbow grease in there and you will find that you can actually get stuff for free. I am paying $130 for this Virtual Boy, but I will get that money back once I make sure both eyes are working, the stand is working. I will get that money back, maybe even make 20 or 30 bucks. but guess what? I get to keep that awesome rental case for free. And that's one thing that I hope these videos help you out with is how to grow a collection. I get a lot of people that message me and say, hey, I'm starting out collecting. Your videos have inspired me to collect, and I'm actually getting an awesome collection just by watching these videos and taking your advice. Here's a nice little score you'll see Miss Ring being pick up. She gets Ready to Rumble 2 boxing for the PlayStation 2, and she also picks up the copy of Little Big Planet Game of the Year Edition, which is pretty cool because I don't think I have that one. It's going to be one that I get to keep. She only pays a couple bucks a piece for these, but that's still an awesome pickup right there. And the funny thing is, is there apparently was another hunter right beside her that was eager to get his hands on these games, sitting there asking her, hey, can I hold that game right there? And she's sitting there like, um, well, I'm looking at these first. But it was just, you'll run into situations like that where you have hunters right beside you and you're constantly in that race to get these games. 
Here's Miss Ring Mean at another yard sale, and here you can see her asking this gentleman, Hey, do you have any video games? He goes inside, checks around, and guess what? He pulls out some awesome NES games. Now, keep in mind, there was no crazy heavy hitter titles in here, but there are some pretty good titles, such as Blaster Master, Dr. Mario, things like that. So for 15 bucks, this was an awesome pickup right here. I had a comment from someone saying that they started a drinking game for every time that I said don't be scared. But guess what? This is another situation right here where I got to say don't be scared to ask these people if they got games. No matter where you are at, if it's a yard sale, garage sale, you're at the flea market, always say, hey, do you got any games that you're selling? And you would be surprised what people are willing to go in and pull out. A lot of the pickups that you see me and Miss Reen Bean get are simply from asking people if they have any video games. So don't be scared, people. Always ask. I like to think it's more rare to come up on a sale that has a bunch of games sitting out already rather than to just simply ask and say, hey, do you got any games? And they go and pull out a big tub of stuff. It's just, it's uncommon to pull up to a sale and just see some massive pile of Nintendo stuff. It's more often not than I'd actually come up to them and say, hey, do you got some games? And they'd say, well, you know what? I got some shit in the attic. Let me go pull it out. And that's when you come across these amazing lots. So again, people, I cannot iterate this enough. Always ask. Even if you feel like there's no point in asking because you can just feel that these people don't have anything, ask anyways because they will surprise you every time. So here we are with the final pickup of the week right here. This is through the eyes of Miss Ring Mean, and this is actually going to be one that you don't even get to see in the pickups video because I am doing this narration after I recorded all the pickups. But anyways, you see her pick up this really cool Odyssey 300. It's a Pong machine. The guy had a price tag on there for $5. She tried to haggle him down. He didn't take it, but hey, for 5 bucks right here, that's actually pretty cool. It had the power adapter, everything I needed right there. 5 bucks, really awesome pretty cool into the week all right i hope you enjoyed all that awesome live footage and just like always we're going to go through all these pickups individually if i can remember anything about them i'll tell you if not we're just going to kind of zoom through them there's no particular order because this stuff gets scattered every week let's get going now keep in mind a lot of this stuff was miss ream bean stuff so it's going to be hard for me to remember i kind of remember the prices she told me but i can't remember the exact scenario but i'll do the best i can from what she told me all right and this first box or bag happens to be nothing but Miss Ring Bean stuff. So here we go. Now she told me that she got all these games, these NES games, for two bucks a piece, which is not bad for any NES game. Even if it's like a sports game you don't have in your collection, that's not a bad price. Flight of the Intruder. I did not have this excellent score. If I can get any games I don't have from my collection, because I got a pretty healthy collection, it's getting harder for me to find games I don't have. This is not a rare game, but it's just one that you don't normally see, or at least I don't. I get to add that to the collection. Very happy. Uh, she got a copy of Super Mario Brothers and Duck Hunt. This is, I got probably like 10 of these. I keep them on hand for when I make my bundles, uh, my NES bundles, and I refurbish them. Throw that in there. People want that. So that's that's good to have. Two bucks is not going to, you know, be a bad deal with that. Two dollars for Super Mario Brothers 3. Pretty jacked up label, but two bucks, come on. That's still good to have because that's a great bundler with those systems. Uh, I can't remember exactly what she said for the Guitar Hero right here. It's open. I got one sealed. It's nothing impressive. Uh, but I actually wouldn't mind dicking off this just to see what it's like. Uh, there's some Guitar Hero games in there, I can tell, but nothing crazy right there. I want to say she paid maybe $2 for that as well. Um, she paid a dollar for the disc games here that you're going to see. She got Mario and Sonic the Olympic Games here, 2014. That's awesome for a dollar right there. You cannot hate that. Um, she got some individual game or loose disc games right here. You'll see a dollar for Legend of Dragoon. Not complete. It's only got disc two and four. But like I always tell you people, don't be scared of picking up those discs, even if they're multiples, because you can sell those. People need those to complete their set or to finish their game or whatever. Um, it's not bad to pick up. We got Destroy All Humans, which is a good one to have. That is not bad. I, can, uh, I can't remember what that's going to sell for. Just lose disc. Maybe like ten bucks, possibly. Sonic and the Secret Rings, I think I have that, nothing special. I don't like loose disc games, I, I don't have many of them at all, I just don't, if I'm going to have it, I'm going to have it complete if I can, so I'll typically sell all these. Uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, uh, we got Wild Nine. now most of these had the manual, which was cool, you'll see that sometimes where you're, you'll open up a uh, like binder and they'll have the manuals in the game, but they'll get rid of the case and the artwork. Uh, Wild Nine, which is one I did not have. Uh, here's a cool one, Asterisk and Obelik, or Obelik, I don't know how you pronounce that, Kick Butt, PlayStation, do not super uncommon, it's just one you don't normally see, and Tomb Raider Last Revelation, which is one that I bundle with PS1s all the time, 
Uh, was that the manual or something? Uh, she got a couple discs for Final Fantasy VII. This is not the black label version, I don't believe. Uh, the discs aren't in terrible shape. Uh, this is disc one and two. Missing the other two, but that's fine. You can sell those all day for like eight bucks. It's not a terrible thing. And it also had the manual. Uh, let's see. She got Dragon Ball Z 2 Budokai 2. Uh, that it was missing. Oh, in a Breath of Fire 3 case. Ain't that some some shit? I didn't even notice that. That's heartbreaking. Uh, she also paid a dollar a piece for these, which is a really good deal. Star Wars Battlefront 2 for the PSP. A uh, copy of Daxter, which I did not have. Very happy to keep that. Uh, Lord of the Rings Tactics. Uh, let's see, Mickey, you're probably going to be looking at that one, which is Nicolas Cage's Gone in 60 Seconds. I don't care for the movies. I know you do. I'll hold it for you. If you want me to, let me know. Lego Star Wars 2. Now, I will say you better hit me up on all this stuff I'm damn holding for your ass. I, get, I hold stuff for a lot of my subscribers, uh, people that I've gotten to know. And uh, this stuff's building up, man. <laughs> I need to get rid of it get it gone. Uh, Need for Speed Most Wanted. This is the original Xbox version. She remembers last episode when I, there was that big fuss over the 360 version because I didn't realize the price of it. I actually picked this one up. What's actually good is I don't think I had this for the original Xbox. And that's always a win because anytime I can get a game for that system, I am very happy because that collection is very big. Uh, let's see. I got this one. This is a fine for me. Nothing special. Pirates Legend of the Black Buccaneer. I got that at a uh, thrift store for... I don't know, like a dollar ninety-nine. It's I think it's exclusive for the PlayStation. Nothing special, but one I did not have. Uh, Miss Reen Bean picked up this black Wii. You don't need to see all the gizzards and whatnot. She paid ten dollars for that. That's the price, the max I am comfortable paying for a game or a uh, Wii right now. They just don't move that well. Be hesitant on them. Like I said, it, during Christmas I imagine they're gonna pick up, but right now they just don't sell. Uh, for a dollar a piece, she got a very super crisp clean copy of Donkey Kong 64 that's beautiful I think that might be a label oh I can already see that is a label upgrade for me because that's mine that's the one she picked up oh look at the back too you already know what's gonna happen people that's gonna be mine and I get to upgrade and I love upgrading my collection and I think a lot of collectors do that in general because it makes your collection just it gets healthier as it goes you know which I love uh, she also got a copy of Star Wars episode 1 racer nothing special uh, but still, a buck a piece? Come on, all day. She picked up, now she, bless her heart, she doesn't know, uh, the, the most, you know, she knows a lot for, you know, being a, uh, game collector's wife. She knows a shit ton more than your average person. But some things, obviously, she, she misses out on, and she got these GameCube controllers, which I always tell her to get the controllers. She paid, like, a dollar a piece for these, which is not bad. The cords are in great condition, but the joysticks are completely fucked. If you... Get, are out in the wild and you see a GameCube controller, if you can hold it in your hand and shake it and that joystick jiggles around, I usually just pass. But I'll put these together in a defective lot. Someone will probably buy them, I'm sure. Or put them with a GameCube, sell it for cheap. Because uh, I'm sure they still work, but people, a lot of people who still buy GameCube controllers are using them for Super Smash Brothers, uh, and I can completely respect that. They want a really good one, and those aren't. <laughs> Now she paid $15 for all these NES games, as you'll see, and there's actually some pretty decent titles in here. We'll start off, uh, not with the greatest here, but we got Tetris, uh, which is obviously, that's the classic. I mean, if you don't have Tetris, your, your life is probably terrible. Uh, copy of Pac-Man, NES sleeve, well, that's not the official one, but that's fine. Um, I don't collect them. Copy of Friday the 13th, which is cool copy of a Dr. Mario, which for whatever reason, like, when I sell an NES and it's to, like, a, uh, like, a 40-year-old housewife right now, she's all like, do you got Dr. Mario? And I can completely respect that. That's a fun game, but, you know, when they were younger, that was their shit. Um, let's see, we got a copy of 1943, which is actually climbed up in price, which is pretty wild. Uh, we got a copy of Star Soldier, which is very cool. Well, we got a copy of Blaster Master, which is awesome, because that's a good title. And the best, I think, which is a copy of Double Dragon, which is a very cool game. Uh, she paid $15 for all those. Excellent score right there. You can't hate that at all. Uh, let's see. She paid a dollar a piece for these DS games you're going to see. This was a great deal, too. She had an excellent week. This is like, you know how Nintendo had the year of Luigi? This is the week of the Miss Ring Bean. Uh, but check this out. She paid a dollar a piece for these DS games here. We got Spider-Man 2, 
Transformers Autobots. Super Mario 64 DS, uh, which actually I may not have, and I might get the case for that, which will be cool. Uh, we got Dragon Ball Z, I think. Uh, I can't pronounce that. I don't know those crazy damn uh, words. Uh, here we go. We're getting into some of the better games. We got Metroid Prime Hunters, which is a very cool first hunt right there. Uh, we got a copy of Code Loic Loico, Fall of Xena. I don't know how you pronounce that. Uh, we got the SD card for the DS, and we got... Pokemon Ranger, which you know I'm not, you know, the craziest on Pokemon. A uh, dollar a piece for all those excellent scores, man. Those are great deals. One of her better pickups this week that I'm super happy about. Uh, she paid $10 for this right here that you're going to see. And that is this very, very good working Nintendo DS right here. Super awesome. 10 bucks for this. And then we also got with it. A game that I did not have and I wanted to play, which was Mario and Luigi Bowser's Inside Story. Very happy to have that and add that to the collection. It's got this weird funky pink condom on here, but the screen is in excellent condition. And it's even, oh, I'll tell you, it's the, the best part about these things is when they still have the screen cover because it's got scratches, but it won't when I peel that and it'll look absolutely amazing. Very happy about that. It has the charger and all the, you know, the, the whatnots in there for that. That's a good pickup. Very happy. Uh, I don't know what she paid for Little Big Planet Game of the Year Edition. She didn't tell me this is a new one. Uh, all right. I'm assuming a dollar or two. She knows what she should be paying for games. She's very smart like that. Ready to Rumble Boxing 2. Pretty good game for PlayStation 2. That's a bundler. It's not worth reselling. Uh, but that is a good game to bundle. All right. Let's see. Oh, my Lord. All right. This is my pawn shop pickups that you have saw. Um, I got everything you'll see here for a dollar a piece and I am not making that up let me see if I can show this to you without showing you any of my damn important information but you can kind of see on that receipt it's a dollar a piece uh, let's see there's the end of it oh, I'm trying to damn show you without getting all crazy I'm trying not not to be paranoid but there's some fuckers out there that probably want to steal everything they can and they probably got the know-how to do it a dollar a piece for everything you're gonna see now obviously there's nothing like extremely crazy but uh, this is probably going to be the last time that I go to that, that pawn shop because I don't think I'm going to go there at the end and do the big buyout. This I'm happy with, but you'll see here, these are some excellent games. MLB 11 The Show, that's a PSP exclusive, which I am going to keep. Uh, these are some crappy sports games that I did not have for Super Nintendo. We got a Riddick Bowie Boxing. We got uh, Brunswick World Tournament Champions for the SNES Let's see, we got, for the original Xbox, Brother in Arms, Earned in Blood, which I am not 100% if I have. I think I might, uh, but that's okay. A dollar a piece, it, it'll be a bundler. Gran Turismo 4, which I got because I did not know if I haven't gone. Oh, yes, I do not have it, so that's excellent. Adding that to the collection, I know that's exclusive because that's their franchise. This is a good game right here if you've never played it for the original Xbox. Crimson Skies, A High Road to Revenge. Uh, awesome game. I do have this, but I picked this up because for a dollar, this is just one of those awesome games that is a bundler. And like I said, I got people that look out for original Xbox, so if they want that, they are welcome to it. We got a copy of Devil May Cry right here. This is another amazing bundler. Keep in mind, all this stuff was a dollar. None of this stuff is crazy, but for a dollar, that's an excellent deal. Turok Evolution, which I have, but like I said, bundlers, people. Uh, Perfect Dark Zero, another cool game. That came out real early in the uh, 360's life, if I'm not mistaken. Let's get to like what made this very special. Uh, Dead or Alive Dimensions for the DS. Shifting World for the 3DS. Which, uh, my 3DS collection is very weak. Brain Age. The reason why I got this is I have a loose copy of Brain Age. And like I told you earlier, I hate loose copies of anything. I got this complete now. I can get rid of it. The game is not expensive. Uh, but I wanted that. Uh, and then we got regular show here, uh, Motokai and, and Rigby. I'm not familiar with it. I'm sure people are going to get pissed because I'm not. There's Nintendo 3DS. Uh, paid a dollar a piece for that. A dollar a piece for the show, 16 MLB The Show. Uh, that's awesome right there. That'll be a good reseller. And what I'm super happy about, I paid a dollar a piece for these last four games. I, I still can't get over it. Sunset Overdrive, which is actually not a terrible game. That's pretty fun. It's unique. Uh, Call of Duty Advanced Warfare, uh, Day, Z Day Zero Edition, don't know much about it. You can keep in mind, look at the prices that they had on this, and that's the price they would have gotten, but they were you know, going out of business, and they'd say, well, I'll do a dollar for everything you know that they had on the shelf. Excellent. 
uh, W2K15, WW2K, um, you know I'm not a wrestling person, I don't know shit about it. Uh, got that for a buck. And then one I actually did not even know about, uh, I don't know if I I just it, I overlooked it, but what, it was Mark Memoris Infinite Air. A dollar apiece, guys, tell me if that wasn't an awesome deal. That's probably like one of my favorite shekels of the week. Actually, this one that I'm tapping on over here is my favorite shekel of the week. Uh, but that was still an awesome one. Oh, uh, let's see, where the fuck did these games come from? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Let me do a quick stand up and grab this real quick. Oh, don't mind that. All right. I, uh, four, fuck. 70 bucks. I think that was the price I paid. 70, I'm pretty sure it was $70. I got an original Game Boy. Very, very nice condition. Complete in box. The box is in actually pretty decent shape, and it's pretty damn hard to get the box for an original Game Boy. I got that. Uh, for $70, it came with one game, it was like, I can't remember what it was, but the boxes, I wanted this box, this is a box that I needed, very happy about that. But for $70, I also got Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles for the NES, we got some pretty crafty games in here mixed in, we got Caesar's Palace, which I'm telling you, this stuff is like fodder, it's everywhere. Uh, ESPN Speed World, I'm pretty sure I have it. We got Family Feud, which I may not have, which would be pretty neat if I didn't. Frogger, which is another one that you will always see for the SNES. There is the uh, the Game Boy game that it came, which was Disney's Little Mermaid. Not terrible. But what made the lot worth it, of course, other than the complete unbox Game Boy, because keep in mind, when I refurbished an original Game Boy, changed the backs, put a new screen on there, you know, solder in to fix any dead lines or anything like that, uh, I can sell them for like 40 to 50 bucks, so that's, I'd say, $40, 40 of my money back. Uh, but two games that I did not have that I am happy to get, which is Joe and Mac for the SNES, and then this is cool, Biker Mice from Mars, I did not have, that's like a 30 buck game right there. So that's cool to add to my collection, anytime I can add stuff to my collection for a cheap price, super happy to do it. So $70, that was pretty good, oh and he also threw this in, tell me how many times have you seen one of these, remember this back in the day, it's got like a gajillion games in one, these things are absolutely awful. Um, Oh my lord, that's like the original bootleg people. Uh, but he threw that in there I, like he was doing me a favor. He's probably getting rid of it like a cursed doll. Uh, let's see what else I got. Oh, for $20, I got this right here, which was a Sega Genesis. You don't need to see all the hookups uh, and everything. The console's in pretty good condition. It comes with an official controller and all that. But it came with Echo the Dolphin, and it also came with Rocket Knight Adventures, which is obviously the reason that I got this. I got this held for a buddy of mine. He knows who he is. I told him I had to save it for the end of the pickups. This was early in the week. Uh, but I paid 20 bucks for that. That is an excellent deal right there. You cannot hate that. Um, let's see. Before we get to that one, if we can kind of secretly move that away. It's like, it ain't like you don't already know what it is. Uh, we're just going to do it last. Uh, I picked these up today, actually, which was Golden Axe Beast Rider and Raymond Origins. $1.50 a piece for both of those. Very good score on that one. I did not have Golden Axe Beast, Beast Rider. Um, I am a fan of Golden Axe. Golden Axe is an awesome game. If you've ever played it for Sega Genesis, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, let's see. I got all this stuff right here for free. This did not cost me anything. This was through someone at work. They said, I got this stuff. I'll bring it to you. Uh, none of it's worth you know a whole lot. Really, there is a bunch of Wii guitars, as you'll see here. Um, there's, what, four, five, five fucking Wii guitars. Holy shit. Uh, but let's see if we can pull some of the stuff out that it also had. Uh, let's see. We got a copy of Guitar Hero. Uh, there is, oh my lord, a PlayStation 2 in there. Anything in it? Come on, rule of rose. Nope, it's Guitar Hero Legends of Rock. I thought these were all guitars for the Wii, but I guess not. I guess they're for PlayStation. I haven't had a chance to look. And it's got this decal, which I will remove and do something. that actually came off pretty damn easy. That's all right. Uh, PlayStation 2 console. That's all right. And it's a Slim. Slims always move. Uh, let's see what else is in there. Oh, my God. A copy of Roller Coaster Tycoon. Don't know a damn thing about that. Uh, for the PC. What's in here? Anything? Nothing. Empty case. But I love having empty cases because I need those all the time whenever I ship something. Oh, Lord. There's the hookups. A controller, which I don't need to dig out. Guitar Hero 2. Um, a lot of these... Are they wireless? 
Uh, no, they're wired, so that's good. It's a lot easier to sell a wired guitar than it is a wireless because you're always missing the dongle. Uh, and I swear there was like some other loose discs. I hate when you see a box of games and it's, it's loose discs just flying everywhere, which is the case right here. They need to be rescued. Uh, Conflict, Global Terror, don't know anything about it, not too sure. Uh, NFL Blitz 2003. These are scratched, man. Luckily, I got a resurfacer, but who knows if they'll play. Tomb Raider Chronicles, which is cool. And The Sims for PlayStation 2. Anything else in this big box of wonderfulness? Uh, oh, and there's this weird thing. I don't know what the hell this is. It's like a phone or a... I have no idea. It might be a phone. That's freaky looking. I have never seen that. I don't know what it is. I have to look it up to see if it's worth a damn. Uh, but that's it. I got that for... Well, no, it ain't. I got... Guitar Hero 5 for PlayStation 3, just right randomly in there. And Guitar Hero World Tour, big Guitar Hero person, I imagine. Uh, and that's it. I got all that for free. I ain't gonna hate that. Anytime I get free stuff, you can never be mad. Now, if I'm out in the wild and you see me buy all that stuff, you know there's a problem. Uh, unless I'm getting it for like 50 cents. Uh, but anyways, people, let's get to the final bit of it. The one that I'm super happy about that I have just... This is something that I've wanted for a while. Ever since i seen one, I was like, oh, I want one of those. Um... This was originally listed for $200. I obviously wasn't going to pay that. So I said, how about $150? Uh, we settled on $150, which is what it was going to be, um, which is a great deal. It is a Nintendo Virtual Boy, and it is in the Blockbuster rental case. How awesome. Now, obviously, there's a little bit of damage here, but I can repair that. I can clean this up. This thing is going to look so pretty. Um... We ended up actually settling on a hundred and thirty because the stand had a chip in it. It had a crack. It just it wasn't it wasn't a hundred percent. So we was able to shekel down to a hundred and thirty. I will sell the Virtual Boy, make that back, maybe like ten or twenty bucks extra, uh, and I'm going to keep this amazing case for free. And what's really cool about this case, as you can see, is it has the freaking styrofoam in there. That is super cool, and it has check it out right here. Look at this. Woo! It still has the printout over here. This case is in excellent condition. It smells old as fuck, uh, which it is, but this is something I wanted for my collection. You know I love my virtual way. I got one complete in box now, and I have the rental case. You do not see these things that often. That is cool. That is my favorite pickup right there. This thing is going to clean up nice. I'll show you the aftermath of that once it is cleaned up, but for $130 for a complete virtual boy and it had two games in there i can't remember what it is i think they're just commons uh it's not like a water world or damn yeah you know, the brothers here it's red alarm and mario tennis mario tennis was a pack-in uh that's crazy look at this it still has from this rental store johnson city tennessee but it still has their thing in there i guess that's was because that's how you had this it was a rental case that is super cool guys i am so happy to get this my favorite pickup of the week there's always going to be a favorite one let me know what you what your favorite was in this episode what did you like seeing the best you know the best shekel but to me it was this one uh but anyways guys that's it i hope y'all enjoyed this week's episode and again make sure you leave a big like for miss ring I mean, if it wasn't for her this video would not have happened as you can see a lot of the the, the footage was from her next week may be the same way i'm because they, they got my schedule all fucked up at work uh, but obviously I'm, I'm fixing that. We're going to start having some really good weeks. We had an amazing week this week, thanks to her. But anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching. Make sure you hit that like button, subscribe, share the video, help me out. This channel is growing and I love it. All you guys are awesome. Take care and enjoy the rest of your day, people.